Okay, welcome back. So in this video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to hook up, um, set up, basically let it let CubeIDE do the setup of the A to D converter for you and how to configure it within the sort of uh, GUI um, that comes with um, um, the, the STM32 CubeIDE. Of course, this is the same thing. Of course, this is the integrated version of CubeMX if you're a long-time STM32 aficionado. Um, CubeMX, of course, came first. It got integrated then into um, STM32 CubeIDE later on, which is, we, you know, we use it inside of CubeIDE now. But, it, you know, if you've been, if you, you know, if you're working from, you know, say a, a Linux command line or whatever, um, which I tend to work with that way sometimes myself, um, you know, you'd be using CubeMX to do this. But in our case, we're just going to create a new project Use, use cube uh, inside of here and let's let's go in and we'll set it up to read the temperature temperature the channels that we need for the temperature all right so um, let me switch over to my cube IDE all right so here we are inside of cube IDE if you've been following along here's the timer capture video um, stuff that I did I'm just going to create a new project file new uh, STM32 project again we're, we're working with um, the L the L432 a nucleo board, um, just because it's nice, it plugs into a breadboard, um, and it's it's a decent part. We've been, you know, we kind of uh, use it in a lot of projects here, not because it's the only part that'll do it, but it does a lot of what we need, and so that, that's oftentimes, um, at least um, in our setting, um, that, that's that's good if it just does what you want it to do, um, and it's not horribly expensive. Um, and so I'm going to call this STM32 temperature video. So I remember what it is. Yes. And I need to, uh, one of the things that I wish that, uh, oh, that I wish that, that Cube IDE had was a way to put this into a uh, project group. Um, so a working set. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put it into my current working set here. And so, okay, so here we are. We've got our, our stuff set up. I'm not going to bother with setting up the timer stuff. So if you, you know, if you want to, you know, if you're aggregating this, this is basically the bare vanilla uh, version. It's not going to have the, the timer stuff in it. So again, I just want these things to be standalone. And then you, I'm, I'm assuming if you're a student in my class, you're integrating those. Uh, otherwise, um, um, you, you can just jump in and just work on this. <coughs> All right, so we're going to go to the analog. Uh, we're going to go to the ADC. And um, in here, we're, it gives us an opportunity to choose the channels here. And I think it's uh, 17 is the uh, temperature sensor channel. Yep. And we're going to turn on the reference, the internal reference as well, internal reference channel. <coughs> and so down here, what we're going to do, if we, let me see if I can get this to show a little less of that and a little more of this. We're going to come down here and we're going to um, leave everything as it is up here by default. We're going to change the number of conversions here. So there's this notion of rank um, in, the, in the STM32 sort of uh, ADC world here. Rank means that there are 16, um, you can set up a group of conversions to um, once you start the converter, you can then keep polling for conversions and it will keep converting the next channel in your group, right? It's that group you can set up. The rank means what position in that group you are. Again, one through 16. And so that, that group then, um, you know, down the road, you can imagine that is something like a regularly set of, regularly sampled set of channels that you've got that are gonna, you know, maybe, get triggered by a timer and then are going to, you know, sample by DMA and that, that value, those values are going to get jammed into memory. Um, you know, you can, then you can set up, you know, uh, filtering to, to make that happen in memory. In our case, it's just going to make it a little easier uh, because we can set up both channels um, simultaneously here. And then, um, so, so for now, we are going to use the groups, uh, this, these, these conversion groups. But um, it's really for the purposes of, of sort of making it a little easier to set up. Um, anyway, so, so we come down here, we change the number of conversions to two. 
it will show us that we've got um, you know rank one and rank two. And so they're both set up for the temperature sensor. So I'm gonna set the first one up for the temperature sensor. And I'm gonna change the sampling time here from two and a half cycles up to 640 samples. And now, um, I can't tell you, so what we're talking about here the sampling time is, how long do they leave the sampling switch open so that it can charge the capacitor that's on the front of the A to D converter, all right? And so, of course, when you're charging a capacitor, the voltage will rise up asymptotically to the actual value you're applying to the capacitor. So the voltage will approach that over time. Now, do I know that 640.5 cycles is optimal? I don't. I just chose the largest value because in our case, we care more about about um, accuracy than we do um, speed. And so in, in some applications, you that's not true. The, the speed is much more important, right? And so um, in our case, we want accuracy, so I've, I've, I've set it to the maximum. There is very likely a, a diminishing return that when you're out, you know, maybe, you know, maybe a better, you know, maybe at 47 cycles, you're basically at the final value relative to the accuracy of the sensor itself. So I don't know this is better. I just made it bigger um, just to, 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 to maximize the accuracy. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't done any detailed study to say this is the optimal value. All right, rank two, I'm gonna change this to my reference int. And so then I'm gonna change this to the higher value as well. And so that gives me my, my, um, my two channels, okay? And so that's it. That's, that's, you know, so I've set things up to um, give me the ability to convert both those channels. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this and I'll let it generate here. Actually, it gave me a warning here. Okay, we need to fix this. And let me show you, let me show you what has happened here. You probably got this warning too. I, I, I want to uh, say no here. I want to I want to go back over to here. And one thing you're gonna notice is that I didn't, uh, you know, I I I have seen this before, but but this is a uh, um, something I think you need to be pay attention to. There's something about our clock configuration. Remember the clock configuration is this big hairy um, clock tree here. And remember from the old days, in the old days, this was a, this, this sort of getting this sort of thing right was really challenging because you could easily step into a mistake like um, just when I configured the A-to-D converter, stepping into that, you know, mistake would be very easy. And so this is a, in many ways, this is a really nice uh, tool to have. Um, it gives me this little dialogue. You want to uh, automatically run the, you know, clock issues resolver. Yeah, I'll, I'll turn that on for next time. For this time, um, I'm going to have to turn on resolve clock issues here so that it can go in and fix the problem that I've got with my clock here. And so it, it changed this divisor here. Divide, I think it was dividing by 6 to dividing by 16. And I'm going to accept that as, as um, um, something that I need to do. So the PLL, uh, PLL for the uh, uh, A to D here is, is, is changing the divisor for it. So I think that uh, um, now when I save it, it should be fine. All right. So there we go. And so, um, you know, of course, my... My code doesn't do anything here yet. Um, and if I come down here, I'll look and I'll notice that I've got my, I'm down here in the, the MX ADC init. So this is where the, the, the converter gets initialized. It does the things that, um, you know, to set up the converter itself. That's what this H ADC handle is. That's the actual ADC device. And it comes down here, and here are my ranks, right? So I've got a temp sensor, and I've got a reference um, integer, or the reference, internal reference. And so, and it does a config for each one of these channels, right? It loads up on these structs, configs it. Now, now when I go and I start the conversion, when I start the converter, and I pull for conversion, it'll go 
one to the next of these ranks, right? And so if I had more ranks, if I had up to 16 ranks, it would do those in sequence as I pull for conversion. Now, again, um, you know, this, this really sets up the sort of, you know, sets up the, um, the, the mechanisms or the machinery to do all this with interrupts or doing all this with DMA, which is, is, is probably in the end more common. But in our application, if we're just trying to get an understanding of how ADC works, this is probably a better way to, to get started. And then, you know, you can add on top of it the machinery. The machinery's there. You can start using that machinery to do things more, say, efficiently in your code. All right. So for now, I, you know, I can see if this builds here. Yeah, let's see if it builds. I'm good to go. So, so I've, got, I've got everything configured. And so in the next video, I will go through and I'll, we'll write a function to actually um, read these channels and then, uh, and then see how well they work. All right, more, more on this the next time.